Mark Ray Mundy for ESPN here in Los Angeles with AJ McKee. Things got uh, pretty heated downstairs at the press conference for Bellator 263 just a few minutes ago. I mean, what happened? Pitbull stormed off the stage. You you took the Bellator featherweight title from the day. So what, what happened down there? Um, well, I just claimed what mine, what's mine. You know, like my father said, we state facts. Um, it is a fact. He has went verbal in interviews and said he's going to whoop my in front of my father and so forth. So... I'm gonna ask you a question. How do you feel? How would you feel if I tell you I'm a whoop in front of your wife and kids? He didn't like that so much. So, uh, yeah, whatever. You want to kick chairs and throw little pitter pat tantrum parties? It is what it is. You know what I mean? You're showing me everything I need. I'm already under that skin. I'm gonna just go in there, do what I do best, and claim what's mine. It definitely seemed like um, that comment about his wife and his kids is really what set him off. Were you surprised that it set him off as much as it did? Not really, because he talks about we're being disrespectful, but there's been very minimal to no disrespect that has come out of my mouth, you know? Out of respect of a fighter and the accolades that he has accomplished, I wanted him to sign a newspaper that we're both in. You're going to go cross my picture out. All right, that's one thing being disrespectful right there, you know what I mean? And it's like this is a personal thing. It's not even like for the media or anything else, you know what I mean? So this is like a direct disrespect. Mm -hmm. And then you want to go on cameras and talk about whooping in front of my father and so forth and he can't do nothing to help cool like all right i'm, I'm gonna fuel your fire now maybe you need that little fire to get sparked up but yeah how you gonna feel when i whoop your in front of your kids and your wife you told me that newspaper story so was that here this week was it last um, week that was uh last week it was at the open workout mm -hmm. um hans hans did an article um and yeah i asked him for some hard copies obviously i mm -hmm. wanted to get them signed by pitbull and i and just be able to hang them up one day, you know? Um, looking at my father's career, there's not a lot of newspaper articles mm -hmm. and stuff that he uh, he saved over the years, you know? So um, just continuing the legacy, having those things to be able to show my grandkids, my kids one day, you know? Um, that's something I look forward to. So uh, I just I thought it'd be cool to have his signature mm -hmm. on it, you know what I mean? So you, you had the newspaper, you brought it to him, and, and then what happened? No, they wouldn't... They wouldn't even let me take him the newspaper. Uh, like, okay. Somebody wouldn't ask him to sign it for me. Someone from Bellator went. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and then when you got it back, he signed it, but he also crossed my whole picture off. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like disrespect. You know what I mean? Like all you had to do is sign the paper, dog. Like I'm gonna sign it. You sign it. Be normal, cordial human beings. But whatever. It's been it's been a, kind of an interesting build to this fight because both of you guys over the years a little bit here and there some you know a couple a couple things said a couple things said um and now finally it's here right now finally it's happening and you know the stakes couldn't be bigger it's one of the biggest fights in built our history got a title on the line got a tournament title on the line got a billion dollars on the line and and legacy on the line too i mean uh for both of you guys i mean and then you add this you know this bad blood to it it's got almost it almost like checks all the boxes right for for a combat sports event definitely definitely um for me, though, I mean, fighting out of anger, fighting out of emotion is, I read that in Art of War, that's the worst thing to do, you know, mental warfare is number one warfare, so uh, I'm already in his head, I've been in his head, you know, from him ignoring me to switching the back brackets to uh, ducking, putting all the younger cats on one side, all the wrestling, um, to where now, there's nowhere for him to run, you know what I mean? Um, it's here, less than 48 hours. If you if you win this fight on Saturday against Pitbull, do you think that makes you the number one featherweight in the world? Definitely, definitely. Um, no other featherweight's undefeated. You know what I mean? No, no other fighter is undefeated besides Khabib. Um, Eighteen fights. You know, let's look at the stats. Just just within seventeen fights, twelve finishes, six submissions, six knockouts. Like. That's like the stats for basketball. How many threes, how many rebounds, you know what I mean? How many layups? So uh, I'm all about the stats, you know, and I'm looking forward to going and add, adding another knockout under under my stats. Do you, do you uh, ever allow yourself to think about, like, you know, what a fight, you know, with you and, like, Alexander Volkanovsky would be like or what a fight between you and, like, a Max Holloway would look like? Do you think about definitely, that ever? Definitely. Max Holloway is one of my dream fights. Um, Brian Ortega put me in a triangle when I was 19, so... I got to get that get back one day. Uh, nothing <laughs> personal, but hey, put me in a triangle. You know what I mean? I got to tap me out, dog. I got to get that get back. That's that's mandatory. So, uh, <laughs> and this isn't just jujitsu this time. You know what I mean? We're going to be punching and kicking. So, um, 
Volkanovski, I'll send him back to rugby, man. This is this is this is a different sport, you know. Yeah, he's a champ, but I've been doing this my whole life. He was good at rugby. I'm great at fighting, and I just feel like that's what sets me apart from all these other ordinary fighters. You've won you've won fights in this tournament in a variety of different ways, you know, from quick knockouts to, you know, submissions that no one has seen in like, you know, uh two you know, twenty years. Um, how do you win this one? How do you beat Pitbull? Um, I think he's gonna beat himself, you know, go out there, fight smart, wait for him, and uh just catch him, you know. I, I like I said, I can fight five fives at my pace. Can he fight five fives at my pace? No, he talks about he's fought someone a lot similar like me, which is Strauss with the reach. But Strauss wasn't as fast as me. Yeah, Strauss may have had the reach, he may have hit hard. Strauss wasn't as fast, nor did he have the conditioning that I have. So, uh, and you saw how that was. It was what two, two to one. So the fact that Strauss won one, like if you put Strauss with better conditioning, I guarantee you, you know that's already one, one extra fight. And then you put jujitsu in it involved as well. That's another fight. Like, so to me, that's three and zero, oh, and that, that's the way it should be. Last thing I saw on, uh, I guess, Belter social media that Snoop Dogg kind of cut a video for you in support of you. Um, that seemed to irritate Pitbull because he kind of did like a response video on social media. Do you have a relationship with Snoop? Do you know him? Yeah, that's like Uncle Snoop. I, uh, my dad went to school with him. So, you know, my dad and him go way back. And then obviously I played football on his football team along with my cousin, Joey Davis. Joey Davis was on the all-star team, just tearing the field up. So uh, yeah, it's it's been years to come, years in, in the making. We've known each other. Um, played football with both his kids. So uh, yeah, we're close, you know. I, I feel like everyone's just kind of kicked back and watched an eye on me. And now that my moment's here, they're all uh, they're all just supporting, you know. All of Long Beach, from Giveon, OT Genesis, like Giveon was my wrestling teammate. You know, that was my partner. That kid in the wrestling room singing. <laughs> we're like, bro, come on, we're wrestling and you're singing. Like, but hey, you know, his voice is, phenomenal it's one of those voices you always remember does it feel like this is kind of your moment like this is kind of it's in LA you know it's it's definitely. the best guy in Bellator history definitely and I think uh with everything opening back up that's why Bellator brought the show here they they know I was going to sell the stadium out I mean I did more in tickets ticket sales than I did my fight purse so that that's that says it alone right there you know what I mean like this show is there for me um and yeah like Coker said the uh, the fans definitely play a part in in the arena, but um, for me, I I prefer to fight without fans. Hmm. Like I just I feel like it makes it ten times more technical. Excuse me, it makes it ten times more technical. On top of it's how bad do you want it? You know what I mean? There's no fans to cheer you on. It's literally power of mind, power of heart. How much do you want it? Thanks, AJ. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.